Thanks everyone for joining us. We're going to get started here real quick uh, with questions from those that we have in the room. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, Rick, Rick Morgan. Let's start off with the easy one. Let's just give me a scouting report on Washington State and what are they doing differently than in the past, particularly defensively. Um, well, it's a brand new staff, so we, you know, there's no comparison to what went on, you know, the last couple of years under Paul Wolf. You know, they. They got a new defensive coordinator who came in from Montana, and so they, they run a three-down package. They run a four-down package. They run a, a lot of different looks on the on the defensive side of the ball. They're very very multiple on that side of the ball. So um, we've got you know their first four games to to kind of go off of, and and that's what we're basing our game plan on. But it's a very multiple defensive front that we're going to face. Raise your hand if you have a question. Oh, Rob, I'm sorry. Some of the young guys on on offense, the Anthony, Marcus, some of the ball security, some turnover issues they've had through four games. Is that a particular concern at this point of the year? I mean, I realize it's always a concern for you. But how much, if at all, are you harping on those guys in particular after the last few years? We're on it every day, you know, and it's not because of what's gone on in the past, but it's something that it's a fundamental that we need to continue. Um, you know, sometimes you got to give them credit. I think Tevis, their safety, made a real nice hit on DeAnthony, but he's still got to hold on to the ball. But um, it's something we work on every single day, ball security. Steve Summers. Coach, how, how dangerous is a team like Washington State who's had some uh, frustration up to this point in the year uh, for your team going up to a neutral site stadium? It, it, I mean, just based on how they run their offense, they're dangerous because he's going to throw it 60, 70, 80 times against you. So he's always winging it down the field. And, you know, there's an opportunity. They're, they're getting their, their athletes in space. And, you know, if we're not where we're supposed to be and, you know, um, we got to wrap up and tackle in the open field. So it's a very dangerous offense. And I think because their mentality is to pass first, pass second, pass third, is that they're always going to be in the ball game because, you know, a lot of people have a, you know, run first approach. And then when they get behind, then they start throwing the football to try to get back into it. But, you know, I think they're always, they're always in the game because of, you know, Mike's offense. And he's uh, been known as an offensive innovator. They score a lot of points, um, you know, and, and I think – a matter of them getting a better feel and grasp, and each week that they're in a system, they're going to be better at it. So, um, I, I think it's a real uh, formidable foe when we're going up there to play against him, especially because of what he does. Dirk, Coach Washington State's played two quarterbacks with Tool and Halliday. How would you compare and contrast those two and what they do? They're both similar, you know, big, tall kids. They throw the ball really, really well. You know, we faced Jeff. Um, two years ago, I didn't play against us last year. I've always been a big fan of Jeff Tool. I think he's an outstanding prospect. And really, um, you know, two years ago, I thought he had a great year. He just kind of bit by the injury bug a little bit last year. And then Halliday's numbers, when you really look at them, is, is they're pretty mind-boggling. You know, he came off the bench last year towards the end of the season and had a couple monster games for them. Um, I know it was a different coaching staff. So, um, But they're both tall. They both throw the ball really well. They're, I think they're both fits, fit very well for what Mike's trying to do offensively. Rick? Lots about playing in Seattle. It sounds like uh, half the house is going to be Oregon fans. And any reference to Seattle or Pullman or anything like that? No, nah, we got. No, I have no say. So we just get on a plane on Friday and go play on Saturday. So, and and I don't know. I mean, people say it's going to be like this, and then it's not. You know, I don't know. Till we get there, I can't tell you what I can tell you what my experience is after the game's over. But I don't have any preconceived notions going into it. So, Gary. Chip, talking to some of the players about being back in school, they seem to like seeing other students and not just being football all the time. Do you, do you have to talk to them at this time of year? I know they go through it every year, but is this also a, a good transition for them? Yeah, it is a good transition for them. And we've talked about it, making sure they understand their their schedule changes when they get back into the swing of things. But, um, you know, I, I it's part of the process for them, you know, being a student athlete. So um, I, I think it's a good transition. Joy, we're going to go to the phones. Um, are there any questions for Coach Kelly? If you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Joy, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Are there any questions on the phone? Yes, Dennis from KSSports.com. Are you coming to me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Chip, is there a certain amount of touches you go into wanting to get uh, DeAnthony every game, or is it just kind of organic and evolved? Did you say organic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. <laughs> Trying to blend in with the Eugene crowd. Um, no, we don't have a set number of touches, but we know, obviously, he's a factor in our game plan, but there's not a set number. And a lot of it, again, it, it, it depends on how the game unfolds. You know, all of a sudden you jump out to a big lead, your, your game plan kind of changes, or if you get behind, your game plan kind of changes. So, But there's not a set number. Um, but we want to make sure he's getting the ball in his hands. In order to ask a question, press star and then the number one on your telephone keypad. We're going to go back, Joy, to uh, questions that we have uh, from those in person. We'll go back to the phones in a minute. Aaron? Coach, how far has Colt Lairla come as a young man in the past year? He's had a couple of missteps here and there, but how, how much maturity have you seen out of him? I think Colt's grown up in the last, you know, he's been here probably because he came in early. So been here getting close to two years now. But I, I've seen a growth in Colt since he got here as a true freshman last two marches ago. So I've seen him grow as a as a person. Is he someone you guys have to on more so than others? Or? No, I, I mean, we take a vested interest in every every kid we have in our program. So, um, you know, it, it, there's always – it's one thing with one kid, one thing with another kid. You know, sometimes there's, there's more help in one area than there is in the other areas. But, the, you know, I think everybody um, – needs the support and, and and what i think is how we do it is it's all tailored towards the individual so you know we don't believe in the statement that there's no i in team is i believe there's 100 105 eyes in team and and it's our job to make sure that we've created an environment where they have an opportunity to be successful eric you talked a little bit about washington state's passing offense specifically wilson what makes him such a dangerous wide receiver he's got great skills you know i think I don't know where I saw it the other day. Todd McShay had him in his top five, you know. I mean, but he's he's tall. Um, he's a great route runner. Uh, he's got a great wingspan, and his ability to adjust on the thrown ball is 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 uh, really speaks to his athletic ability. It doesn't have to be always be an accurate throw because he can go get it in a lot of different ways. And he's got great range for his size. So, um, you know, he he had a real I thought he had a real good game against us last year. Really impressed with you know the physical skill set that he brings to the What's table. The key to locking him down. Then? Everybody, 11 guys on defense. You know, it starts with a pass rush. You know, not letting the quarterback set his feet and, and giving him time to, to kind of find out where he is in his progression, uh, making sure that uh, we so hopefully we can disrupt their routes and not let guys run clean down the field and, and then make sure we're pretty close to them in coverage when the ball's thrown. But it takes 11 guys to be great in pass defense. It's not, you know, a matchup of such and such is on him, so he's got him the entire game. That's that's not how we do things on the defense side of the ball. Rob, you're going into a game where yeah, you figure your secondary will be tested. Kipo played a lot of football, but you know, kind of a state of the game. I think a lot of people know his name now that might not have a week ago. Um, anything to, you know, a confidence boost to, to him, Troy, guys who, who are going to maybe in the spotlight a little bit, having had some big moments last week going into, into this week? Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody um, gains confidence when they're playing well, and I thought both those guys played really, really well last week, and, and uh, you hope they build upon that, and that's the – the good thing, you know, and sometimes you can't, you know, predict when they're going to get X amount of opportunities, especially in the secondary. You just don't know what their game, people's individual game plan is until it gets in the game. Are you going to throw a lot of one guy or throw a lot away from another guy? Uh, how are they going to try to, you know, what's their answer? And it's always interesting as a coaching staff, um, Nick and those guys devise a game plan, but it's interesting. You can't always predict where the ball's coming out, where who it's going at. But, you know, when, when it is thrown, it seemed like it was thrown. I think Ifo had two interceptions and three pass breakups. So, you know, got tested at least five times. Um, you know, I thought he responded real well. And, and, and that's what, you know, the confidence comes from demonstrated ability that, you know, it's not just fake talk. It's it's you were tested and you and you did st step up to it. So um, hopefully he can, you know, gain from that. You know, the way I saw him practice today, and he's got a little bit of extra bounce and stuff. So he is playing with a little bit more confidence, which, which bodes well, especially for this week, because, I mean, he's going to chuck it. So. Are people going away from Nixon? I don't know enough about uh, there isn't there hasn't been enough, you know. Opportunities to to say that you know are, are they going away from or going to them? If you ask T. Mitch, they are. <laughs> but that's Terrence. Rick Warren. Coach, you know, you've had four on the four at home now, and you're getting ready to go on the road now for the first time. Are the guys excited to go on the road? And the thing that you have to keep. Uh, I guess keep mindful of uh, the first game on the road. 
I, I don't know where their mindset is right now because we haven't really we haven't talked about it. You know, we're just Monday's introduction to game plan, Tuesday's you know tough, hard physical practice for us, and that's all we're talking about right now. We're not concerned with that. We'll get into some of the logistics about travel and all the other things when we get to Thursday night's meeting. But um, you know, they know, and we've talked about it all the time that to be successful, you got to win on the road. You know, so it, it'll be interesting. But we're, we're young, you know, so. It'll be a lot of guys' first trips, the DeForest and the Eric's and some of those guys that, you know, haven't been in, in that situation. So there's a newness to them. So I'm sure there's a little bit of excitement to them. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably address that a little bit more when we get closer towards taking off. Joy, going back to the phone, if there are any questions there, this will be the last chance. Please press star 1 if you have a question for Coach Kelly. There are no questions at this time. Any final questions here? Well, you know, I think when you look at that, again, we're, we – there's never a talk from us about what are our yards per carry, but if your yards per carry are that, you know, when you look at them, they're going to get their safeties involved in it. But look at the play action passes for touchdowns is that, you know, when, when you devote people out of your secondary to stop in the run game, um, I applaud you, but you also have to cover people when they run by you. So, you know, you can't, you can't have it both ways. So, um, you know, I think they, they did a good job. I thought their safety, Tavis, was, was a heck of a player, as good a safety as I've seen in a, in a while here. Um, physical, tough, hard nose, came up. He's a kid who hit DeAnthony, um, really took on our receivers, and, and we got some kids who can block, and he took them on really well. But, you know, we, we hit him with a play action to Colt down the sideline for a big play, uh, hit him with a play action to Braylon for a touchdown, hit him with a play action to um, Daryl Hawkins for a touchdown. So at the end of the day, it's, it's where's your production. And, and the great part about our team, our staff, everybody, we don't care where it comes from. You know, if, if we got to throw it, we'll throw it. And if we got to run it, we'll run it. I think we're built for that. So we don't really look into the specific aspects. If they're taking one thing away, they can't defend it all. So, um, you know, really happy with the way we threw the ball. If you're going to devote nine guys and, and try to stop the run, then God bless you and we'll throw it. So. Molly? A couple of things about receivers. One, uh, your receivers do a lot of blocking and they figure in a lot downfield. Is it hard to recruit receivers and say, well, we're going to put you to work doing this as well? No, you know, what? That's an interesting question we get all the time, but I think if you look at it, every team in college football runs the ball. So, And when I watch tape, I don't see other people we're playing where their receivers don't block. You know, I, I know a lot gets made of our guys, and, and we take a lot of pride in it, but, you know, if if you're at, you know, USC last week that ran for 275 against Cal, you know, you're going to see Marquise Lee and Robert Woods blocking. You know, I, I get I, that that question always kind of rankles, rankles me because – I watch other teams, and there was, I think everybody blocks. You block in the NFL, you block wherever you play. If, if you don't block, I don't think any coach would accept that. I, I know we emphasize it a lot, but, um, you know, we're not running the ball. Maybe we run the ball more than Washington State, but I think by and large for the rest of the guys in our conference, you know, I, Rich, Rich runs the ball. We run the ball. You know, I, it, everybody's receivers block. So. And then to follow up, uh, after four games, where is the receiving core? You've had it to play a lot of younger guys. How do you assess it at this point? I'm pleased with those guys. I think I think uh, they're doing a good job, you know. And I'm I'm real happy that we got a chance to add some some young guys. And I think Braylon has really taken advantage of his opportunities. Dwayne Stanford has taken advantage of his opportunities. But uh, overall, I'm pleased with our wide receiver play through four games. Quick follow up. Sure. I think people with more casual knowledge of X's and O's, present company included, you, know, you think play action, you think high formation. Um, that would be funny if we got in the I formation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, how, how, how often, when you throw the ball, how often has there been a run fake or a run, even a run option at all? Seems, a lot. Attention, it seems like, wow. A lot. I mean, every, every time you throw the ball? No. I mean, we have a drop-back game and a quick game and a screen game. And, but I would say, I don't know the exact percentages off the top of my head, but it's it's a, you know, it's part of what we do. You know, it just, it, it's, it's you're trying to move and displace and, and attack players that have dual responsibilities. You know, they, they have a responsibility in the run game, but they also have a responsibility in the pass game. And if you can put them in conflict, you know, with a good play action fake, then then um, that obviously allows for you to, you know, when you see receivers wide open, if you were going to drop back and throw it, you're not going to get receivers wide open schematically, unless 
someone just blew a coverage. But there's a lot of times when you get people wide open, it's because you attack somebody. And when you're looking at teams that are saying, hey, our safety's got to fit and be in the box in the run game, but also cover the deep middle, those are the guys you got to attack. Alex? Uh, Chip, for the Monday night football game, the end of it, how can you use that last play? How can you use that as a teachable moment? I know you didn't watch the game, but how can you use that as a teachable moment for your guys? I know. I study and don't watch a game at night because we got school. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I've got oh. A couple of new wrinkles last week. Uh, it was what? Uh, Saw Marcus under center and Anthony on a fly sweep, and then Colton and and Brian Bennett as, as a package. You guys do that on a game by game basis uh, when you see what the opponents are, or is this stuff that you've kind of been thinking about since last spring? Um, we game plan always on a weekly basis for our opponents, but we've been under center and run fly sweeps before since I've been here, so that's part of our package. And Colts lined up as a running back in our first three games. He just was a blocking back. Um, if you watched him, he actually threw a couple great blocks in the Tennessee Tech game as he was, a, you know, kind of the lead back in that situation. So, you know, we, we also self-scout ourselves if Colt's always the blocking back in the backfield, and then how do we expand that role? But you got to have people that can do that. But we've lined up Ed Dixon in the backfield and, and run him before in the past. You know, I mean, it's all part of it's all part of our overall package. And then what we do on a weekly basis is how much can we put in, in a weekly game plan for that team. But there was nothing that we ran – new that was a new play for us um that wasn't in our game plan it was just you know we may have deployed our personnel a little bit differently but it's not things that we haven't done in the past either so okay